<laughs> I can't wait to go. I want to go check one out. Yeah. Barbecue. Know. Sounds great to me. Beer. Come on. What else do you what need? What else do you want? Country music? <laughs> yeah, country music. Dolly. Dolly. Yeah. Amazing. Shania. Canadian. Yeah. What do you want? We love. It's a, it's a great pleasure to welcome to talk about National Anthem. Uh, Luke Gilford is in the Q studio with me right now. How are you? Great. I'm so good, and it's really, uh, it's my first time in Toronto, it's my first time at TIFF, so this is all just a great surprise and first experience, it's all fun. Well, before we get into the film, I want to talk a little bit uh, about you, and can you talk a little bit about you, like, you kind of grew up around the rodeo, right? Yeah, yeah. My dad was in the Professional Rodeo Cowboy Association, so I, I was born in a little mountain town in the Rocky Mountains, Evergreen, in Colorado, and... um yeah, all my earliest memories are rodeos, traveling around with him and, you know, the, the sunsets and um, adrenaline, rhinestones and hairspray and blood and dirt and all of that was just a big part of, you know, it's so indelible of an experience. And, um, and then as I grew older, I realized just how homophobic and misogynistic and um, racist that world can be. And so naturally I stayed away, but then discovered this whole subculture of the queer rodeo in like yeah. 2016 and slowly developed trust within the community and started photographing people and taking their portraits and really connecting with the community and was pulled so much to, to keep going back. Yeah. Um, so once or twice a month, I would go into, you know, Texas or New Mexico and um, go to these rodeos. And then a couple years into the photo project, started writing a script. And it was very much my experience, but also a lot of the folks that I was meeting doing shooting them for the book I would connect with them and ask them questions about their stories and um, a lot of that made it into the film as well as just my own personal experiences so let me just slow that down a little bit so you you, you grow up your dad's in uh, in the rodeo circuit mm -hmm. you're going to traveling around going to rodeos yeah mainstream rodeos yeah so like we have like I, I, my only experience I'm from the east coast of Canada so we okay. don't have any of those where, uh, Alberta though there. there's a tremendous number of yeah. them and in Alberta yeah Alberta northern Alberta Saskatoon and I I watch the Calgary Stampede every year. Okay. And like, yeah, I watch like, right. I like the barrel racing a lot, yeah. you know. And yeah. I, well, did, Sky's a barrel racer. In, in the, the film, yeah. did you ride? Uh, not really, because as I grew older, like I knew pretty early that I was queer. Okay. And so, yeah, it was just, and also my dad broke his neck and his back and stuff so many times. Right. It was not the most appealing thing. Yeah. Um, but I was always drawn to the Western culture. So this project was a real way for me to to connect, you know, both yeah. ends of the spectrum. When you say, and only as much as you want to say about this, like when you say that, like, you at a certain point you realize that that culture that you were brought up with, like the rodeo culture, the mm. Western culture, you started to, re you said you started to realize mm. the, the uh, homophobia, transphobia, mm. you know, racism within that, within mm. that scene. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, like what you noticed when that when that started happening? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, even so, as when I was really young, a lot of my favorite um, people at the rodeos were the rodeo clowns, um, and just because for a child that's so exciting, you know. Yeah. But then as I grew older, I realized that they were actually often mocking queer people. Really? Um, like so in their dress or in their mannerisms? In their mannerisms, and there was a lot of jokes about. Uh, queer people to the people would make and sort of these backhanded kind of things. And so, you know, there's this moment in time uh, where you just realize, oh, this this world is against me, actually. Um, and so, yeah, there was this kind of... Uh, and it's so interesting, too, because nature and open spaces, that's a huge part of the Western culture that I love is nature and mm -hmm. animals. And that... Um, you know, those wide open spaces, there's no literal markers of who or what to be. And I think that that's something that's so beautiful about. Um, and also just in, you know, the movie's called National Anthem. Like, this really is the heart and soul of what America's supposed to be, is like, be yourself. Yeah. And let other people be themselves. And so there is this kind of reclaiming of that for the people that are typically excluded from that narrative. How did it feel to tell that story about yourself out there? <laughs> um, cathartic. Yeah? Yeah. 
but it's a younger version too. I mean, I, I'm I just wrote finished writing or almost finished writing um, a new script, and it's definitely more mature. You know, it feels like another version in self years later. So I think that's the beauty of storytelling is that it's these moments in time. And I think the ending of the film, I won't give anything away, no. but I will say that it's, it's the beginning of the rest of his life. How did you find the people that ended up you finding community with? You, you mentioned you, start, you discovered the queer rodeo circuit. Yeah. How, how did you discover it? Where, when, and all that? So I was actually at, um, in Northern California, where my family lives now, I was at a Pride event, and I heard a Dolly Parton song. Yeah, which one? <laughs> playing in the background. Um, I can't remember what it was. I just remember hearing Dolly. And you love Dolly. I love Dolly. Who doesn't love Who Dolly? Doesn't love Dolly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was Here You Come Again. Okay, great song. Yeah. And... So the spirit of Dolly was pulling me, <laughs> tether, <laughs> yeah. and then saw these queer cowboys. And because I grew up around real cowboys, I knew this wasn't like the village people and uh, started talking to them and really connecting. And they invited me that very next weekend to a rodeo in New Mexico. What I'd, was it like? I mean, it was like this electric charge of belonging that I'd never felt before. Yeah. It's like if you show up, your family. That I must never... have been so great. I mean, <laughs> given that you were raised with this thing and all of a sudden you feel excluded from this thing, I mean, mm. I can't imagine how that must have felt. Yeah, it really was uh, magical. That's the best way to describe it, I would say. And yeah, just kind of kept coming back. And also what was really cool too is that in urban queer spaces, it's it's often about like status, you know, Um you know, who you are, what you do, how much money you make, how yeah. many followers you have. In this world, like, a lot of these people don't even have social media. Like, they, there was none of that. Like, so many of them don't even have cell phones or, or smartphones. You know, it wasn't, like, about that. It was so much more about connecting on a deeper level. Sounds powerful. Yeah. You decide then I'm going to start taking some photographs? Not immediately, but once I kind of, um, yeah, built some trust, made some friends. and How do you do that? How do you build the trust in order to start documenting and taking photos and all that? Connecting with people. Chatting. Having conversations. Yeah. yeah. Letting them know that I was kind of from this world, because that's often a similar story of people that grow up in this culture feel sort of, it's a lot of outsiders, you know, people that are kind of rejected from it, but then creating their own safe space. Mm. So then you start taking the photographs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're so beautiful, the people. I yeah. mean, really. Um, and there's so much resilience and, yeah. and beauty and power in that. And so, yeah, I wanted to, I hadn't seen anything like it before. And I wanted, I think that, and this is something I really want to explore in the movie too, is that so much of what we have seen, especially rural queer stories, are tragedies. And I haven't seen anything that is hopeful set in that world and so and i saw so much hope and mm. resilience and, and beauty there was like okay i have to share this like mm. we need this in our community i'm so happy to hear you say that because uh, and maybe this is i'll confess this to you when i was watching the film i kept expecting <laughs> something bad to happen yeah that i could kind of predict mm -hmm. i was like oh i bet he's going to be rejected by you know yeah. or Oh, I bet the mother's got, but like, I'm hearing what you're saying there. I feel like even I, as a viewer, am so conditioned mm -hmm. to tragedies in stories about queer people, yeah. especially stories about rural queer people. I'm, I'm just conditioned to expect it. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I can see now what you mean by that. You, you wanted to kind of break that in this film. Yeah. I mean, as a queer person too, you're conditioned to expect it in your real life. Why would you want to see it on screen all the time? Yeah. When did the story come to you? I was trying to find uh, a way into it that felt personal, but also uh, and authentic, but that uh, that wasn't too alienating for viewers too. And so I found that actually, just the, truly the most personal of someone discovering this world would be that kind of felt right. Um, and so that's what the movie is, is someone who, who is an outsider then become, you know, discovering it and finding the beauty in it and that 
opening up so many multitudes within himself that he didn't know existed yet. Did, did the story come to you as you were looking through the photographs? No, I mean, the Dylan story is very much my own in a lot of ways. Um, so that's what I mean. I, I kind of was looking for other people's stories and then decided, actually, I think it makes more sense to tell my own a bit more. Right, right. I understand. I should say for people who we haven't really got to the plot of the film yet. It's a, it's not a, it's not a documentary about what we've been talking about so far. It's, a, it's a fictional story about a young guy named Dylan who takes a job at a ranch full of queer rodeo performers. Um, so you, you said you decided you decided you wanted to tell a little bit of your own your own story. There. Yeah, of someone who uh, discovers this world kind of on accident, and um, and it just completely opens them up to and and gives them him space for the first time in his life to discover himself and these these multitudes within himself but also to fall in love for the first time and and that whole experience too um is you know something that can kind of break us open oh, that's, that's beautiful i love the mm -hmm. way you talk about it um <laughs> Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, uh, something I heard you you say. In, ca in case people are listening to this right now and thinking that these are two disparate worlds that we're talking about here, like American cowboy culture and, and queer culture or, mm. or, or drag culture. And, I, and I've read an interview with you when I was getting ready for, for, for our conversation where you said there's, a lot of, there's actually a lot of connections between those those two worlds. Mm. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, there's so much sort of division happening, um, not just in America, but everywhere. Um, and, you know, I think also politics, too, it sort of reduces people to numbers and statistics. And I was really interested in a human story and telling stories about humans. And so that's what this is. And um, I do think that there's, uh, you know, that promise, that idealism of the American dream. And um, I, I do think that there, that's so much the cowboy tradition too. Um, but that's also the queer history too, of kind of like becoming, you know, living your truth and becoming what you want to be and um, the new frontier and all of these. There's a lot of parallels between um, cowboy culture and queer culture when you really look at it. You said you were really um, intentional about the music in this film. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I grew up, you know, listening to a lot of kind of outlaw country and like folk. Will and Jennings and, and yeah, Towns Van Zandt yeah. and um, and I love that that it sort of paved the way for a lot of what country is today. But there's so much poetry and sensitivity and and emo like authentic emotion in that music mm. that that really felt right to explore in this film, where it is about these kind of a cowboy who's brave enough to get on a bull, but also to try drag for the first time. Mm. You were interested in bringing some of that, the poetry of country music, again, the sort of the unrepresented part of country mm. music into the soundtrack of this film. Yeah, yeah, the, this more sensitive and poetic side of country. So how did you choose the music? Um, well, also, the music, too, was a huge way that I connected with the actors. Um, we, I would share playlists with them. And so that was a huge way of kind of for them to get into the world and get into the characters. And so music was a big part of the process. What did you send them? I mean, a lot of the music that's in the movie. Like Elvis. Elvis. Um, well, also Perfume Genius made uh, some original songs for the film, which I'm very excited about for the world, to for those to like, come out, mm -hmm. too, because they're just... I I don't cry often, and I cried when he sent me the songs. They they really moved me. Um, and they it was, he wrote them when he saw the film. Well, where did you find that Elvis song? I had never heard that before. It's a demo, actually. Where did you... What's it called? Uh, tomorrow night. It's been years I've been building this place. I started writing the film in like 2017. Right. So it's been a long time coming. What, why did you want that song to be sort of the centerpiece musically of the film? The lyrics. For people yeah. who don't know the song, can you tell me a little bit about the lyrics here? The lyrics are basically, you know, tomorrow night will you say all the things you're saying to me tonight. And it's sort of that the story of their love in a way where... Um, it's this moment, but will the moment last is the question. When you, when you tell me that story about sort of, sort of like 
the early days of going to kind of rodeos and you start seeing rodeo clowns and you have this kind of realization that like, hey, they're kind of making fun of queer people. Mm. There's, there's some like pretty blatant homophobia here. And is this really a culture that I'm uh, welcome in? You find um, community in, in queer rodeos in the United States and that, uh, what a beautiful community and, and family you found there. You discover you know, how, how folks are living together and how folks are creating their own sort of families within these ranches. I feel like, like it's been going on for a while, so I, I don't want to pretend that it's brand new, but I feel like in the last like few years, thanks to folks like um, Orville Peck or, or Sierra Farrell or... Um, Brandy Carlisle. Brandy Carlisle. Yeah, maybe Brandy, but Lil Nas, Lil Nas X even too. Like I'm just yeah. talking about like fashion-wise, costume-wise. Oh, yeah. You're seeing a demonstration of these regalia, these clothes that mm. would be worn in sort of... Um, rodeo culture and cowboy culture becoming a really big part of queer fashion, queer culture. Well, I mean, I think there's also just, um, as the great RuPaul said, you know, uh, you're born naked and everything else is drag. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think uh, rural and cowboy culture is very much drag. It's a so kind of exaggerated form of masculinity as well as femininity. And so, of course, queer people are drawn to that because it's, um, it's camp. Um, but uh, that's also what we were really trying to do in the film is to show a more soulful side of that too. Um, the, the, the drag queen character, uh, you know, we've seen so many drag queens that are campy and catty and all of that in pop culture, but I really wanted to represent the, the deep, more soulful side of it. I think um, there's so much kind of bravery, especially now more than ever, that comes with the art form of drag. And so, yeah, just showing a little bit of a different side of it was a big goal. But um, I think it, it it makes sense for queer people to reappropriate these symbols. It sounds like it's meaningful to you that, that country music and cowboy culture is being reappropriated. Absolutely, yeah. I think it's beautiful. And I think it's time that we really rethink these archetypes of the the cowboy that we grew up with where it's all about dominance through you know virility and and uh power and that that type of like toxic masculinity is um a big conversation now thankfully i mean it's good that we rethink these things but um I really wanted to represent a cowboy, you know, that represents some of that masculinity, but also embraces the femininity within himself. Um, I think that that's, that's more modern, and that's where I hope we're headed culturally. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. You know, you're the third music video director we've had here today with features at TIFF. Jonathan uh, Glazer was in. No way. Yeah, just about just this morning, and okay. he has a, he has a new film called Zone of Interest. And I can't did, wait to see that. He did Street Spirit by Radiohead. Yeah. And like, oh no, know, I know. Virtual Insanity. Yeah, it's amazing. No, he's a legend. We just had um, Tarem Singh here. Amazing. Who did Losing My Religion? Who did Nine One One by uh, Lady Gaga? Yeah. Also, he, you know, Grant Singer's here. Oh really? Yeah, he did Reptile, the film with Justin Timberlake, and but he's done tons of music videos for like The Weeknd and Lord, and and we're old friends, so it's but, meaningful that we're both here now. But so have you. You've done a lot of music videos as as well, right? A few. Yeah, uh, Troye Sivan. Troye Sivan, Christina Aguilera, Kesha, Kesha. Does making. I've been asking, it's just been a really interesting day to have all these music video directors mm. here. Does making music videos, is there something going on? Like, does it prepare you better to make your, make your feature? I don't know about prepare, but for me, it's how I, because I started as a photographer. And as I made my name as a photographer, people started asking me to make music videos for them. Um, because that's how we met, you know, it was through photography and they liked my work. And so that it just happened organically, but it wasn't something I even, um, it, kind of like Dylan within him. it's like that opened up the, these multitudes within myself that I didn't know were there where I just fell in love with cinema and became obsessed with storytelling and uh, visual storytelling. And then, um, you know, I didn't go to film school. So I kind of then, you know, in my twenties, like discovered criterion collection <laughs> and things like that. So, um, watching safe by Todd Haynes was like a spiritual experience for me. And, just yeah falling in love with film and 
now I'm here. It's what a dream. It's a really, it's, I mean, it's, it's well-deserved and it's incredible too. For someone um, who's listening to this who's never been to a rodeo before, what's, what's the best thing about it? I mean, what I touched on, at least for these rodeos, the fact that if you show up your family, that to me is just really unique and beautiful. So even just for people like spectators that come, it's such a warm experience. It's very family friendly, which I love. It's very wholesome in that way, which I appreciate, especially for a queer space. You know, oftentimes in cities, it's not very wholesome. Um, so I love that. I also love the competition aspects, like the drag competition aspect and the, and then the, of course, the rodeo competition aspect. Um, but you know, there's, especially for these outdoor ones, you're in these beautiful natural landscapes, you're getting like, you know, sunsets and mountains and then like adrenaline and blood and sweat and denim and dirt. And it's, it's a lot. Hairspray. <laughs> I can't wait to go. I want to go check one out. Yeah. Barbecue. Know. Sounds great to me. Beer. Come on. What else do you what need? What else do you want? Country music? <laughs> yeah, country music. Dolly. Dolly. Yeah. Amazing. Shania. Canadian. Yeah. What do you want? We love. I really loved watching the film. Um, I loved thinking about the film, and I really loved getting a chance to talk to you about it today. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Congratulations it's great to on it. I'm a fan of yours, so it's it's cool to be here. It's, I'm, a, I'm a fan of yours, so it's cool <laughs> to be here. Um, 